Welcome to Module 8C, Treatment of Scholarships and Grants. By the end of this module, you will understand how to determine if the taxpayer has taxable scholarship slash grant income, understand when to treat scholarships or grants as income, and understand when to complete the Form 8615 or the Kitty Tax. This module is broken into four pieces, treating scholarships and grants as income, kitty tax, recap, and then we'll end with a knowledge check. If all or parts of scholarships and grants were used toward living expenses, the amount is reported as taxable income on the student's return. The remaining total of education expenses paid to be available for the tax credit is reported on the return where the student is claimed. Students can choose how they want to allocate grant or scholarship money in either living expenses or qualified education expenses. The amount of scholarships and grants that exceed expenses is reported on the student's return as income. You can see on this example here that scholarship or grant income is 9950 minus the eligible scholarships or grants, which then becomes 4950 if a scholarship or grant allows the students to use the money for qualified expenses or living expenses, they have the option to trade in the tax-free status of scholarships to take advantage of the sometimes more lucrative education credit. When electing to take this option, you can make an additional amount of qualified expenses usable for education credits, but you must also make the same amount of scholarships taxable to the student. In the previous example, we were able to determine there are $5,000 in taxable scholarships. However, in this example, there were $0 available for education credits. If the scholarship or grants were unrestricted, then the taxpayer has the option to use up to $4,000 for the American Opportunity Credit. But when we do that, we need to increase the taxable amount by the equivalent $4,000, making the new taxable amount $9,000. This option should only be considered when it has been verified that the grant or scholarship can be used for living expenses. Be alert that by adding taxable income, it can affect earned income credit and other credit amounts, as well as state refund amounts or amounts owed. Looking to maximize credits can increase refunds by over $1,000. Many dependents have little or no taxable income, so moving income to the return can be very beneficial for taxpayers claiming dependent students. Whenever possible, the best option is to have the parent or parents and student come in together to get their returns prepared. This may cause a filing requirement and the dependent to owe, but usually does not outweigh the benefits to the parent. For the kidney tax in Form 8615, Adding scholarship income to a dependent's return may increase the dependent's income enough to create a filing requirement or the dependent may already be required to file. So if a dependent is required to file, see Publication 4012 Tab A, and the taxable scholarship income exceeds $2,200, then include Form 8615 on the dependent's return. Form 8615 calculates a different tax rate for dependent scholarship income, it does not always mean that the dependents will have a tax liability. Beginning with tax year 2018, Form 8615 is now in scope for VITA. Let's recap. As before, the taxpayer must have Form 1098-T and a copy of the student account statement to claim an education credit. The taxable scholarship and grant income is reported on the student's return when the amount exceeds qualifying education expenses. In some cases, you can report scholarships as income taxable to the student to maximize education credits. So let's end with our knowledge check. Again, we have the module eight quizzes as well as Dear Iris letters. And up next, module nine, Affordable Care Act.